yeah hello and welcome to this video this is a bit different to the more frequently posted tea session ses whoop, tea sessions wow um this is about me trying to solve some chess problems and puzzles we had the puzzles picture thanks again to willem for the nice pictures um so i'm going to try to solve a couple of more difficult exercise exercises and um there are many uh, good books to provide with high level exercise for this video i went for our gods that's not completely right uh grandmaster preparation positional play and uh, he's got 150 exercises at the end of the book they even more but there's just one 150 position a block that um, is not um, um, attached to a certain subject so um, sometimes you get hints what to look for if the, the subject is let's say a prophylaxis you need to yeah you you look you you will look um, more for the opponent's uh, possibilities than if the subject would be completely uh, unknown so there are 150 positions and i'm just going to randomly select uh, some of them um, it might happen that i know the position because i used some of them for my own lessons so i might um, have to roll the dice more than once or let's see let's see 145 so let's see if i know this position or not no I don't know the position. Okay, so let's go for this. This is a game Nishnik against Verle, uh, and we're looking at this from the from the black side. Um, of course, I couldn't prepare the positions because they are randomly selected. So um, yeah, let's put the position on the board. It takes a moment, but I don't think it's avoidable, really. <laughs> If you do it, do it like that. Yeah, I guess I could do the dice rolling beforehand, but I know that people will then post, eh, you cheated or something. I, I know, I know how it works. So this one. Still need some rooks. King on G8 and on G1. So this is the position, it seems. It's black to move. This right, okay. I'm sorry, I, I'm I'm really bad at setting up positions. I tend to screw little details up and they often do count okay i'm going to switch the board and check this from black's perspective of course i don't use an engine that would be rather pointless so yeah black to move first of all we need to look at this position a little bit and try to figure out what's going on it is equal material this position is probably um it's probably arisen from the queen's indian queen a4 line against like 4g3 bishop a6 queen a4 so it's an interesting struggle strategically speaking white currently has some pressure against the pawn but this pawn is safely protected so we're not going to lose it anytime soon but there are some other things going on um, one interesting point here is that bishop takes c5 currently might be a threat as there is so much pressure on the d-file. Another idea that we have to be aware of is black is knight to b5 maybe to increase the pressure. And a typical idea also important in this kind of scenario is the move e5 that can also be tricky because Let's say it would be white's move and e5 happens. Um, yeah, we might have g4 then, but it would be awkward because we cannot take on e5 as d8 is here under under pressure and d5 also wouldn't be possible. 
So we need to deal with a couple of a couple of ideas here. Mm, okay. An interesting fact is that we have G5 played. That is um, sometimes allowing G4, pushing the knight away from F3. That can be an important resource. And it is sort of a candidate here as well, even though after G4, and I'm going to put it on the board. I think it makes it easier for, for people to follow. Um, the knight only has h4 and e1 if we assume knight e1. Here the problem would be that h6 is hanging. It's just attacked. And white still a threatening bishop takes c5 and e5. And I don't quite see how I address both ideas. So I think g4 is probably not correct at the moment. So what's going on here? An interesting question is, what happens if I just develop? I mean, a normal way to play would be to move the knight. The knight is not yet in play. And c6 or d7 are um, yeah, reasonable looking moves. The most normal one is arguably knight c6, as this is looking at important squares. The question here is what happens after e5? This is the thing. If white goes e5, do we have a good reply to that? Yeah, in fact, I think we can just take it, right? We can just take it. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be a problem. Or oh, we have knight d7. What I don't like about knight d7 is that the knight is having no um, no active idea. If you go to c6, you at least um, can imagine um, a scenario where black plays, and I know it might look awkward at first, but sometimes you can play something like e5 and then put the knight to d4. White, after all, has a weakness on d4. So knight c6 is a strategically speaking more desirable move. If we um, look at this in terms of candidates, what other moves would be candidates? It's not that much, I think, as we're really dealing with those ideas with bishop takes and and potentially e5. Hmm. What I wonder about is if we go knight c6, again the move e5. This is something that I'm not completely sure of, what I'm doing now. I don't think I want to allow a capture on d6. I don't want to isolate this pawn. So we have to check out the captures. And if we take with the pawn, this is looking a little bit awkward. Yeah, let's say rook takes, rook takes. Yeah, this is actually not so clear. I mean, this is, I think, a little bit better for white, as c5 is such a weak pawn. If you got this here, it looks, I mean, maybe it's more than a little bit better for white. This looks a bit awkward. Um, and bishop takes, yeah, um, c5 is, is, is hanging, but he also has this. And this is probably not a good idea. Yeah, 93. Uh, that doesn't even work. Yeah, something like that is pretty embarrassing. The trap of the night. It doesn't look all that great. 
Can I do something else against e5? Yeah, I can take with the knight. Knight takes e5. Then let's say we take here. This also doesn't ins doesn't look so great. So I don't think I'm getting the the point of this. An interesting idea that I had is if you play knight d7, simply focusing more on the prophylactic side of things, then e5, uh, an idea that I immediately thought of was uh, bishop f3 in this position, going for an exchange sacrifice. This actually is interesting. That is not completely outlandish to look at at least but it is even that is not enough even that is not enough just king g2 yeah that doesn't look right and the the the, the second issue is that after bishop f3 um you also have to look at d takes uh, e takes d6 it also be a bit of an issue if you look at this Rook has to move, and I mean, I don't know, the resulting position <laughs> looks awful. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't quite believe in that. Uh, that's, that's just that just doesn't work actually. So um, this also doesn't work. Okay. Hmm. So what do we do? What are we playing in this position? Ah, I just had an idea. And the idea is the following, g4, knight e1, bishop g5. Is that maybe an idea? It's kind of interesting. I guess white will take. And now the question is, um, does he have something really convincing here? Because if I get, if I get to e5 with this knight, I'm definitely okay. The knight is super safe or on d4, of course, that also would be good. The issue must be e5 in this position, and that is probably ending, ending the whole line. Is it? You can actually actually consider this like this one and knight c6. Just going for this big square takes knight d4. Hmm. Tough, huh? That's a tough position, but definitely interesting to to think about. Um, solving these kind of uh, these kind of puzzles, it's it's not a classic puzzle that it has a super clear solution in a tactical way, but this can really help to improve your play. Just to think deeply about such a position, um, and yeah, try to figure out what the key elements are.
I wonder if I'm missing something in those e5 lines when I play knight c6 or knight d7. Maybe if I'm mis-evaluating them. I have no idea. This is interesting though. It's also an active way to play. The move knight h4, by the way, is more or less, I think, refuted by bishop g5. He cannot take it, that is trapping the knight. And um, you don't want the double pawn or the e file. So probably he has to play something that he really doesn't want to play, like rook e1 or something. So knight e1 has to be played here. And we can check this a little bit more. Maybe my initial evaluation here that the pawn is hanging and this is hanging was too shallow anyway. Bishop g5 is indeed uh, interesting as we have looked at. But you can also consider just to play knight to c6 in this position. If now bishop h6, the move knight d4 is possible. It's not really covering this. B4, there's knight to b3, probably. Hmm. So this is an option. Bishop g5 is an option here, or maybe knight c6. Let's have a look at this again. So takes, takes, e5. This must be the critical line. Yeah, I have to take. There's not much to, to 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 else to do. Maybe maybe king takes instead of knight takes. So let's do this. Knight c six. Yeah, he more or less has to take. Otherwise, yeah, has to take. And now knight d four again. Maybe knight e4 is the problem here. Knight e4. Yeah, that, that looks like the problem. Yeah, that, that looks bad. Maybe this is the issue. I don't have anything else there. So this could be the problem that the king takes uh, on g2 in this line. It's not really convinced, right? Takes, takes. No, I cannot quite get it to work. Or is there anything else here? We have to always go back then and see if you can improve. Yeah, but yeah, what else is there I have to take? Yeah, there's nothing else. So maybe bishop g5 is not really doing it. We had this knight uh, c6 idea, yeah? And I think if black um, manages to play h5 and simply cover that pawn, it's not uh, an issue, really. So takes a knight d4. Yeah, that, that is interesting. That's definitely an interesting line. I'm not sure that I see a refutation. The g4 pawn is a little bit on its own here, but not, not able to attack it. Interesting. I was just thinking 
that I was just thinking that this is also uh, something that that could be checked actually because if white takes and that must be critical takes takes rook takes bishop takes rook takes knight c6 we look at this or knight a let's go knight c6 no I, okay i see it doesn't work but i i was thinking that if we get here that could be something but the problem is that after knight d3 this is not you cannot save it so this is a, this is a, a nonsensical idea that doesn't work my best bet is this line really and knight d4 i don't feel like i solved it really it doesn't feel like i solved it so I suggest to look at the solution and it, it's it's a long it's a long uh, I looked at it for quite quite some time and I couldn't quite figure it out I think now it's interesting to check um, what the solution is kind of curious I feel like maybe I screwed something up with the with those lines here um, 96 or 97 so knight d6 was right yeah so this is what you want to play but i did not see the key move after e5 this is the thing yeah and here um the move i missed is knight a5 going for the counterplay Mm, yeah that makes a lot of sense the line the critical line is e takes knight takes bishop takes knight b3 bishop d6 knight takes d2 Yeah, it seems that everything works here. N nice line, yeah? Not easy to figure figure this out for sure, but I didn't even look at knight a5. So let's do one thing. I'd like to go back and um, switch on the engine and see um, how, how various lines uh, fare. So the engine immediately gives the quoted variation with knight c6 and basically says everything else is terrible. So again, I, I, I felt like I didn't get it right. By the way, Verle in the game uh, played knight d7 and that, that is a disaster. Yeah? This is what I saw basically. Um, but yeah, it's, a bit, it's a bit odd that he still went for it because this is quite clearly not right. This was this happened in the game just to see this is something that i also saw but i didn't put on the board this kind of ending yeah this is a terrible ending it's just a bad ending we, we looked at something very similar i guess it's um, pretty awful yeah this is very weak and uh, you just have huge problems to even um yeah keep keep your things together here on the queen side um and the here the exchange uh, sacrifice um, whatever doesn't work due to ed6 which is uh, which was confirmed by the engine so i looked at knight c6 e5 i didn't see knight a5 the key move i looked at the other moves and i thought they were bad again yeah i looked at this this is actually exactly the line that i just uh, gave via knight d7 which is bad for black as i concluded d takes e5 is also not good i think i got that one right yeah all those lines are bad white is always one pl plus one here and it's, this is a kind of evaluation that goes up if you give it more time yeah every little ply of depth um, will make black's position look more miserable Um, what i'm interested in is the g4 move how terrible that really is okay i completely missed that knight e5 is actually a move 
Okay. That's a huge problem also. But knight e1, I just wanted to check if this is making any sense or not. Yeah, bishop g5, I think, didn't work due to due to e5. And this is uh, supported by the engine. And king takes is indeed the critical line. Yeah, knight takes, knight c6, as I said, was good. But king takes is the problem. So knight c6. Um, and here you just have no way to save yourself, yeah? If you would have one or two tempi, like knight, knight already here and so on, then okay, it doesn't work. Um, so that was this line. Knight h4, I concluded would be okay after bishop g5, but the computer even get, says f4 is great. Okay, that, that makes sense. This and now you got multiple problems. Okay, so that, that doesn't even work. Um, yeah, and here I couldn't quite make it work. I thought the, this, this was still somewhat interesting because bishop h6, knight d4 is okay. That's kind of true. But the problem is that here still e5 works, which I didn't look at, but I was kind of desperate <laughs> at this moment. I didn't, I didn't quite uh, felt I was on the right track. Yeah, this is indeed bad. It's the same kind of thing as before. You can take with the pawn. Oh, here even rook d7 is strong. Wow. Ouch. Now everything is hanging. So, yeah. What can we take from this? I saw some ideas correctly, but I didn't really solve this position in a, in a, in a really um, conclusive way. Now, let's do a second one that took a long time. Position number 18. Let's see if I know this one or not. It's kind of. Um, no, don't know the position. That's good. So it's a game Elianov against Jan Smets. Clear board from White's perspective. Looks a little bit almost an opening position it's definitely something on move i don't know 12 or 14 something like that interesting yeah but what i basically always say uh, the, in the opening you also have to make many strategic decisions and there's really not much of a difference there to a middle game some people have this uh, yeah, they say, okay, this is just the opening. I, I don't look at openings, but oftentimes um, they just have complex strategic decisions and um, needs to be viewed as a, just, just a normal decision-making process, what you're, what you're doing. Okay, is that right? I think it is. Um, yeah, why to move, why to move? I think it's right. I really often screw up the head up, the, the pieces. Yeah, okay. And I have to switch off the engine. Oh, shoot. Now I have to enter it again. <laughs> ah! Shh. shh. Hmm. Okay, let's see if I'm a bit quicker this time. Now, after I have set it up once, I should be a bit quicker. Eight, 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 the queen, knight, yeah, queen on c4. And we should have a black king, I guess. And an e5 pawn. Sorry for this long wait. But you can check the position out a little bit uh, while I'm doing this up. I had to switch off the engine. It would be, be awful if it immediately uh, give me a hint. Now, so this is uh, why to play Elianov against Smets, probably a Bundesliga game. Now, what is going on in this position? Black probably has just played the move e5 to free himself. <clears throat> we have a position where white has got the bishop pair and he would definitely like to 
open up the position in um, his terms. A way to not do it is to take on e5. This is pretty clear that something like this leads nowhere. Yeah, black can probably just snap this off and is fine. So the capture is not really great. Often a good solution in such a scenario is to play the move d5 because white is arguing that, and I don't think this is best, I'm just showing the idea, is that if you get something like that, that this bishop here is strong. This would be um, the case if we would have e4 in and be much more developed, then the bishop on g7 looks a bit stupid. But here, this doesn't seem to work at all because um, black has at least the move knight b6. And this is already a bit awkward. Yeah, we don't want to trade everything off there. And an additional problem um, might be the move e4. That is also sometimes tricky. Yeah, but knight b6 alone is kind of enough to persuade me to not check this. But if we put this a little bit, yeah. One problem is if we just look at this, like everything gets traded. Queen takes is just never anything, yeah. I mean, just to illustrate. Queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook d8, and I mean, black is better here, right? This is stupid. And rook takes, there is queen e1, showing that our development is pretty bad. So the move d5 does not work. What are we going to do? We cannot move the d-pawn, is the conclusion. At least uh, it doesn't lead to anything. I think more or less normal would be to move the queen in this position, get it out of the knight b6 uh, plan. But okay, this is a very simplistic approach, like what looks normal. You can check other ideas. b4 can be played to attack the queen. Not sure that black is uh, bothered uh, all that much. Looks better than d5. Still not very good. Another move that comes to mind is bishop d2 that prepares d5 in some way, going for discovered ideas. Difficult. What is what is the, I don't really uh, th uh, think I understand the position correctly. Besides going d5, yeah, the only thing I see for white as a plan is b4, b5, really. I don't really see much else. I don't think you can do much with peace play in such a situation. You probably have to change the pawn structure somewhat. My best bet at the moment would be really to go b4 in this position. Hmm. I'm not really convinced. 
let's say queen c7. Still feels like very solid for black. E5 is still not leading to anything. Besides the fact that after b4, the move e4 is also getting much more interesting now that the diagonal is opened. Hmm, that doesn't feel right. Of course, I can play something normal like bishop b2 or so. Don't really believe that. Position like that is all that exciting. And maybe I have a slight advantage here. I'm not sure about this, but it could be slightly better for white. And it's nothing special. And it doesn't feel like a solution to a problem. Queen b3 is a reasonable prophylactic move. That's also pretty clear because I think something like this um, is not in any way problematic in terms of weakness of the IQP. I mean, I'm really active here. So that doesn't really scare me, but it also doesn't feel like anything special. Yeah, the exercises um, from the Grandmaster preparation books are really difficult. I usually get the strategic ones right, I have to say. Um, but I'm struggling. The one before and this one is really not coming to me easily. Hmm, what am I missing? One line that is important is the, this one here. I had knight b6, maybe he can take immediately. This could be, could be better. Mm, that's probably a better choice. Okay, but knight b5 and take on d4. Mm. Still not great. I feel I'm not getting it. I just don't get something that's going on in this position. For me, black feels very solid here. Yeah, I don't see much going on. I'm also not seeing that there is a substantial threat going on maybe maybe the main point of this exercise is to recognize that d5 is bad because it is the normal move strategically speaking it is the normal move but um, as we have looked um, it doesn't work Yeah, bishop d2 is also a move, just looking at the queen, but oops, looking at the queen. But after e takes, I don't see anything great. Knight d5, he takes with the pawn.
and this is definitely nothing special it's always a move like that and then i mean that that cannot be great green will probably go somewhere here no a5 a4 not so bad Maybe knight b6 is not a good timing. I'm currently not really threatening d5 because of knight e5. So maybe maybe black should do something else. Rook e8 or something. Hmm. Again, I feel I'm not really getting it. <laughs> I think if you give me if we now say make a move, I would probably play this, but not with any sort of um, particular enthusiasm. Like, yes, I found something good. Really not. Mm. Okay. That was position number 80. Let's see what I miss here. Yeah, so it is B4. So I wasn't completely off, but here not bishop B2, but B5 is the move. Yeah, this is, I thought about it, but I don't quite believe it is so great. Yeah. Yeah, it is a better move. Bishop B2. It's much more active. This happened in the game. Knight b6, queen b3. And this, yeah, this is difficult. Yeah, that is difficult. Yeah, now this is fine, of course. Yeah. The pawn is not weak at all, and you have this constant pressure the c pawn can never really move and um yeah that's awkward so i got it like half right yeah so at least b before a key move was correct but you cannot really say i solved this one okay let's do a final one number 115 okay Leko Grishuk. So, overhead. I don't have the engine on at all, right? Yes. Okay, white to play, I guess. Yeah. Looked more like a white to play position to me. <laughs> Yeah, this position probably. Is from some sort of anti martial or some. Some quieter. Um, Rulo pass. Oh, is that right? But this. Yeah, and it's white to move, white to play. Yeah. Okay. So we have equal material again. Okay, and uh, there's some there are some imbalances, of course. Black has this pawn formation, and sometimes be vulnerable. In particular, e6 can be vulnerable. Difficult to. 
really put lots of pressure on that. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at this a little bit and try to get a feel for what's going on. What pieces are well positioned and what pieces are not well positioned. In my mind, the knight here on g3 uh, would feel better on c4, but this is quite a long journey. Yeah, like like this. It makes some sense, not completely nonsensical. Another move that always has to be checked, of course, is e5, the central pawn break. Doesn't feel like it's netting much at the moment. If we look at e5, knight takes, pawn takes. Do we have a clever move here? No, probably not. Yeah, you definitely have some compensation for the pawn without any question, but um, it also doesn't look like something particularly special. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what black is trying to do. Does black have anything good here in this? Maybe knight to g4 can be an idea, I'm trying to go to e5. Could be an idea. There's also maybe d5 after which we would like to probably play e5 and then knight g4 is not quite working, I guess, after h3. I'm just thinking what would happen if black is to move, yeah, to try to figure out if I can do something against it or if there is anything that is really um, a huge concern because this is often the way to figure out a good prophylactic move. You just think, okay, black to move, what would he do? D5, D5 I might also just take. Pawn takes, pawn takes, knight f5, something like that. It could be a problem. Also, takes, takes, knight g5 can be a problem. Yeah, that, that also looks a bit awkward. So the knights are probably well positioned to answer d5. Hope you're not irritated by the background noise. Somebody is and I'm not doing I'm not sure what exactly, but they're doing something uh outside of my apartment door. Transporting something, I don't know what it is. I, I would really consider to play h3 here. It looks like a very useful move in many ways, but it also doesn't feel like this is a solution to this problem. I don't see much that I can do with the bishop here. That, that, that really is difficult to see where the bishop could go. It wouldn't be bad on the long diagonal here. Let's say if we would have c4 played bishop on c3, this is, would be better than being on c1, but I don't quite see how, how to get there.
Rook B1. Handing Rook B6. Yeah, that looks kind of reasonable. I don't like... The pawn is unprotected in that case. Not that there is a direct line. But it looks a little bit... It could be problematic in some tactical proceedings when the position opens up that this is hanging. I I I think like H three, yeah, but it it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like I'm understanding what's going on at all. Or do we just play completely differently against the d5 idea? If this is an idea at all, I'm actually not convinced that it is. I feel if I go here, let's say my currently move in focus, that this should be good for white. This should be good. The first line that should be good. And even better looks is this, I guess, because e takes. <clears throat> I feel that this must be good for white. I have knight g5 potentially, you know, but looking at here, knight e6, and also this one, and they both look pretty pretty weird for black. So I don't think he's really threatening to change the pawn structure all that much. And we prevented the knight g4 idea. Hmm. H3, maybe rook b1. But what I was irritated about is this move, really. That it uh, felt a little bit. Now I cannot go e5. And, and this, I feel, is probably good. In this particular case, there is one, of, one, one line where this is hanging, actually. Hmm. I guess h3, but. As you see and feel, I'm not really in any way confident about this. So let's have a look. I don't want to create a three hour video here. It's just good to, I mean, if you really do this as an exercise yourself, you should probably look a little bit deeper and try to really figure it out. Now H3 is correct. So I wasn't, I was right. Mm. Here's the, I just um, read out what's in the book. White should be a little better on account of the freer play and the pressure along the D file. Um, the safest way to secure this edge is by taking into account Black's intentions. At this point, the bishop on e7 is not very well placed, and the knight on f6 is also somewhat restricted. Therefore, his most natural plan is knight g4, bishop f6, and knight e5. Leco, Leco prevents this with a simple move h3. So, okay, I got one right. It just some, sometimes in those exercises, you, you, you have a hard time to figure out if you really hit, hit the nail on the head. Is that really the right move? h3 is some um, very slowish, whatever. Yeah, it's, a, it's not a yeah, bam move. I think, yes, this is right. Like you figure out an exchange sacrifice or something like that. But it really makes sense. It restricts black even more and white is probably a little bit better um, long term. In the game, queen c7 was played by Grishuk. And now knight g5 was played. Bishop g5 is also better for white. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really a little bit un, it's, it's, it's inconvenient, no? inconvenient. Inconvenient is right, like the movie. Uh, knight e5, queen e2, that was the game. 
and white was better and won on move 60 and ultimately. So I got one right. This is a purely prophylactic exercise. If you look for uh, high class um, exercises, the Grandmaster preparation books are very good. But as you saw, it's not easy. Yeah. I mean, I'm fairly um, normal sized international master and usually quite good in, in strategy and I'm, I really have to work hard to find out some of the solutions. So um, don't be frustrated if you get get one of those books and you're, you're stuck. It's pretty normal. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this discussing three positions in depth and um, I'll be back tomorrow probably with um, um, again a Blitz video. Thanks a lot for watching.